good morning and welcome to another appointment of the Happy Fuse News series, Passions in Fashion. Today we meet with theatre director and acting coach Marianne Badrishani. Good morning, Marianne. Good morning, Raffaella. Good morning, everyone at the Happy Few. Marianne, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a theatre director. Uh, and uh, I'm a, an acting coach. I come originally from Paris, but I've been living now in London for 20 years, where I've been uh, mainly creating shows. So sometimes new writing as a director, sometimes adaptations from novels, from tales. And I've mainly did play in what we call black box theater, the usual conventional space, but also in unconventional spaces like cemeteries, train stations, tube stations, all sorts of places where you can reach for a different audience. Wow, fantastic. If you have something to show us, uh, that would be great, some images. Of yeah, maybe it's always good to have a look at the, uh, I guess, the homepage of a website because you have a few images about the production. So I'm going to share the screen now. So here you can see a few images about the productions I've been working on in the last uh, 15 years. And funnily enough, there is one called La Peau de Chagrin that I did in Holland Park uh, not 10 years ago. And you can see there was kind of a prophetic uh, moment in the productions, you know, uh, with people wearing masks and uh, trying to be cured by all sorts of charlatans. So that's quite funny. You're an acting coach. How do you teach at the moment? Are you still doing it? So, as, as everyone does, we spend a lot of time in front of our computers, more than we would like. Actually, our work is really to be in a, in a rehearsal room with actors or to be in front of an audience, and we really had to find strategies around that. So, as for the teaching and auditioning young actors, we've also, also of course, we did a lot of work on Zoom, but also work on self-tapes. So, actors are sending a link where they do a monologue or a piece of text and then you have to work with them. And then you have a Zoom session where you can really try to work on what you want and see if they can shift. What's quite interesting about working uh, not in a room is that because you cannot work physically, you can work with the words more and encourage the actor to make choices and to relish the words, really using the words, you know. And um, so, and, and encourage the young actor or the actor to uh, really project their voice and to find some kind of uh, exhilaration in the use of the text and, uh, and the melody of the verses if we work on a Shakespeare monologue. So there is a central pleasure which has actually emerged from these sessions, which actually leads me to say that we are launching a, a new event for anyone who would like to take part, maybe at the Happy Few, which is called For Your Ears Only. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that you sign in on the platform, give your number, and an actor from our company will call you and perform a text for you on the phone. Oh, fantastic. And uh, the choice of the text is uh, the, the actor chooses it? Or? The actor chooses, so he receives your name and uh, his intuition will make the actor choose the text that he thinks would be good. So, of course, there's a bit of chance, but there's a great selection because the actors go for texts that they've loved forever. So, for example, I'm going to be performing that, actually, and I've got a selection of... Uh, Baudelaire poems, I've got the last page of The Outsider by Albert Camus, I've got correspondences, you know, uh, between writers I really like. So there's all sorts of things, and we do that in French, Spanish, and English. It's really a way of uh, thinking of how we can stay in touch with our audiences by creating maybe a relationship of intimacy, so that's one-on-one, -on -one, the phone call that I was talking about, but we're also thinking about um, you know, doing plays in gardens, in streets, or maybe in disused buildings, or even doing uh, drive-in theater. So you come with your car, and then you see something outside your car. I don't know, we have to think about many, many ideas, because the situation at the moment, as you know, is very difficult for theater and live performers. Um, there's no opportunity probably to perform in the next six months. We were supposed to go to Paris to perform our last production. And it's now postponed to October, but everyone's saying, who's going to want to be in a theatre in the short term? So now, actually, um, Matthew Varkas, who's the head of the uh, whole Vic, is, is even saying that, you know, um, there's a risk of bankruptcy for some theatres. 
and he's not expecting their theater activity to um, start again before January 2021. So uh, it's quite tense, as you can see. We have to be more inventive and we have to keep going in a way or another. So we're working a lot on the scripts more than anything and on uh, do research and development between actors, although we cannot meet yet. So it's a time for um, ideas, emerging of ideas. And uh, I've been looking through my, um, my bookshelf, you know, to see any kind of story I've ever liked that I'd like to adapt and make something of. Uh, I've been thinking when I was working in the Brompton Cemetery nearby of creating an immersive performance in a headphones for uh, someone who would walk through the graveyards and actors talking as the people who are laying there. I mean, so it's, it's been really a very creative time for future ideas, but nothing really concrete. That's, that's a frustration, of course, is that we know that nothing's going to really happen before quite a lot of months. But still, you know, uh, there's an energy there and a willingness to collaborate and people are much easier to reach. So, so new collaboration can start away much quicker. So there are positives. Do people, you feel, want to get away from it and get into an imaginary world without, you know, without all the suffering? I would say, actually, I'm really, t I'm going both ways. So in, in one way, I want to talk about what happened. So there's a play by uh, Arthur Schnitzler called The Doctor, who was done recently at the Almeida Theatre, who was happening in a hospital, you know, and that was very political and very relevant to our times. And that play I'm, I'm, I'm interested in and I'm planning to adapt it for the French um, theatre landscape. So that I'm doing that. So that's really, um, yeah, really close to what we're living. And But we are also working with my associate Edith Bern and Nathalie Behebi on a pure comedy happening in the theater with songs. So something that will be uh, a, a great relief and purely entertaining. Uh, a, yeah, a great comedy about theater in the theater. And uh, so, you know, I'm on both uh, avenues there. Fantastic. And what do you recommend uh, the happy fuse? Uh, should they be uh, trying some coaching, voice coaching with you, theater coaching, just to try something new? Can they reach you and do that? Oh, so I'm completely available, of course, for any coaching session. If someone wants to come with a text they love, and uh, I teach them to uh, project their voice, to choose their words, to, to, to get carried away by the words, because the reality is that you start reading a text you like, and the words are affecting you, and it really carries you into a different dimension. Uh, so yes, we can do that, of course, but I also encourage people to yeah, select the text that you really like and at dinner or after dinner with your family, just, uh, just read them with as much expression and intensity that you can have and even shout them if you want to. And you'll feel a, a fantastic feeling of uh, liberation, I tell you. <laughs> Great. On this note, thank you so much for your time. That was very interesting. You're welcome, Rafaela. And we'll talk to you soon. Enjoy the words. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.